talk about just uh, Tyson McGrady, his family, uh, celebrities like Dr. Malachi New York. Uh, I lived on his 100 acre estate in upstate New York in Catskill Mountains for a whole year. And all I had to do was cook, and I got a nice salary for doing that. And I lived in a combination of suite. But uh, I'm going to see if I can fire my sternos up in here. Um, anyway, I've been working for ATV for the last 10 years. I'm also a manager at ATV. And I uh, do a lot of many events, management, coordinating events. I do cooking classes. I have food, cer food certification with a serve safe food. I have level one wine certification. And uh, I'm also a graduate of the uh, New York Food and Hotel Management School. Uh, let me fry the sternos up again. Let me keep the food hot. So feel free to ask. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm, How long have you been doing this, sir? About 23 years. My father was a chef, so I kind of grew up in a kitchen. Keep her happy. <laughs> 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 That's a full time job. That's awesome. Man. If, if the wife ain't happy, nobody. Yeah. Uh, you gotta keep her happy. I just say, I just say yes to everything. Whatever she wants. That's great. And we usually go everywhere together. So. Only one trip I didn't take her. I went to Dubai in, in uh, September. And it was a rugged trip. You didn't go with me on that one. It was a rugged trip. Was that a private event? I traveled a lot. Okay. I get a lot of my ideas from traveling overseas. I go twice a year overseas. This trip to Dubai was a real treacherous and dangerous trip. I had never been there, and I didn't want to drag my wife along. If something happens, you know. But, uh, we're going to Portugal together. I'm going to Lisbon, Portugal, with some more ideas for food. Maybe located where? I work for ATV. Yeah, he's in Chile. Chile, okay. Chile. Uh, if you want to know any, any information about me, you can just go to Google. Google my name, Chef Otis Wagner. I have uh, just a lot of videos on there. be on saute and searing. Uh, saute is one of the first things they're going to teach you in culinary school. It's very tricky, and sometimes it's very difficult for students to catch on. My advice to you is, if you go to saute, start off with some dry beans and dry rice, and I wouldn't start off in the kitchen. Go in the backyard somewhere. You're going to need a nice saute pan. This is one of the smallest ones you can get, and they come in all sizes. But a great saute pan, as you can see, has the... Uh, the lid sizes on the edges, which keep your food from popping up. Because the word saute means to jump in French. So because in order to saute, you have to have a very hot skillet. It has to be at a very high temperature. The uh, saute method is basically, and we're going to do our, I'm going to do, a, I'm going to sear a piece of chicken here, but the uh, saute method basically is when you're actually moving the product around in the stove. As you're cooking it, you're moving it. You're really doing a motion like this, down to the bottom and then flipping it back to yourself. You're actually turning it over, but you're flipping it. So the food on the bottom is constantly being rotated over the top. And to do that, you just kind of push it down to the bottom. And once you master this, you can saute steak, you can saute fish, chicken. It's about anything. A lot of times, we don't learn the basics to proper training and things like that. And that's the purpose of this class. This class is to teach you how to cook like a chef. And that's what I'm going to do today. This is my stove here, and I can cook just about anything on this stove. It's very versatile, portable, and it's gas. So you can do anything with it. Anyway, just try some dry beans and rice, and just go to flip the motion like this. You see that? Push out and pull back. Push out, pull back. Don't try this in your kitchen. Now you might have beans and rice all over the <laughs> So go in your backyard and do it, you know? And, and once you master it, once you master sauteing, you can just about do anything. The other part of this class is going to be on searing. 
Steering is a totally different method. Very similar to sauteing, but it's nothing like it. Steering is when you're cooking at a high temperature and you want to have a little oil, a little fat on the bottom of your pan. So when you're searing it like a chicken breast, which is what I'm going to do, you want to uh, be able to sear it to the point where it's going to form a crust on the product. And what searing does, it traps the moisture in your fish, in your steaks, in your chicken, or whatever it is you're searing. It traps the moisture in. And once that trap, you trap the moisture in, you know, and then once you finish cooking it, let it sit down and rest for a while because the juices are still moving around in it. Whether it's chicken, fish, whatever it is, once you sear it, the juices are trapped in the inside because you sear it at such a high temperature. You see, sear, sear is basically when your product is sitting on that skillet and it is so hot because you have to get that skillet up to about 300 degrees because everything has pores. I'm going to get into a little science here. This saute pan has pores. And as long as the temperature is like below 300, like 250, 260, 200 degrees, the pores are open. So actually what happens is the oil sits there. It doesn't really sit on top of the surface. So when you sear and you get the temperature of your, your saute pan up to 300 degrees or more, hotter, the pores close and the oil is trapped on top. So you actually, your product, your fish, chicken, whatever you're searing, not be actually sticking to the bottom of your pan. It's going to sear it. So searing, when you're actually searing at a high temperature, and if, if your fish is too thick to sear the whole, you want to sear both sides, and then what? Put it in the oven and finish it off. But uh, usually, if you're doing fish, you know, it's usually about 10 minutes per inch of thickness at 450 degrees. I'm going to keep moving here. Yes. I have a question for you. Why, why, you're, why you're searing if you, and, and, and you're doing it with the gas, uh, can you sear if you operate on a electric stove? Sure, as long as the temperature is. As long as the temperature is. It's up there. Another important point, that's a good question, is what type of oil are you going to use? Are you going to use butter, olive oil, or grapeseed oil? If you're going to sear, I wouldn't suggest you use olive oil or cold pressed extra virgin olive oil because the smoke point will get to about uh, 212 degrees, 215 degrees actually. Uh, I would suggest you use grapeseed oil if you're going to sear or saute because when you're cooking at a high temperature, this has a higher smoke point than olive oil. Uh, Grapeseed and canola oil are the two oils you want to use for steering high temperature. It's a very important point. Most important thing is choosing the right saute pan. The next most important thing is choosing the right oil to cook in. You don't want to throw any butter. If you're going to put butter in here, add some oil to the butter because your butter is going to burn. So if you're blackening chicken or fish, you want to add butter and oil. Because when the butter starts to burn, that's what's going to blacken your fish. That's a blackening method, yeah. Is that somebody learned something? I did. <laughs> anyway, we're going to keep moving because I'm going to see a piece of chicken here that I brought. And does anybody have any questions on saute? I'm going to add a little oil to the bottom, a little grapefruit. Okay, now what do you look for? What are we looking for, right? To know that your oil is hot. You don't want to throw your chicken into oil that's not hot. If you're trying to sear, that's going to set you back. You're going to have to start all over. So what I usually do is, uh, I usually take a little water and give it the water to it. Just a little water. You see that? And we know that's hot. Okay? That's all you need. And another thing, too, is you want to look for is once it starts to smoke, it's ready. So you want to go in with your product because if you wait any longer, your oil is going to start to burn. It reaches it. once it reaches the smoke point. Does anybody know? Everybody understand what the smoke point is? No, I don't. Well, the smoke point is when your oil gets to the point where it starts to smoke, and then the next thing after that, if I don't drop this chicken in here, it's going to start to burn. No, what happens when your oil burns? You got to start all over. If you put your fish in there and burn oil, your chicken or whatever. Your oil has lost all of its nutritional properties. It's lost everything. Mm. Okay? I'm just going to drop a breast in it just to give you a general idea of 
what theory really is. Yeah, actually, uh, and you don't want to really do that. You don't want to touch it. You don't want to move it around. You don't want to do that. Just let it steer. And I didn't season it, but you know, please put some seasoning on it. I like to season with the bread crumbs in it. They call them searing crust. Searing crust is a seasoning that has bread crumbs in it. So you want to, if you want to use a searing crust, it's perfect for this. Because the bread crumbs in the searing crust is what's going to help to build that crust up on it. Another thing too is, see that it's not sticking or nothing. Another thing too you want to do is, when you're dropping a, a chicken breast or fish in a hot skillet with hot oil in it, always drop it in like this. You want to go down like that to you and then away from you. You see that? Drop the chicken first right here, and then you want to drop it into the hot oil away from you so the oil won't splash on you. Because that hot oil is really not going to play. It's really something. And we're actually searing. Searing is really a high temperature cooking where you are, uh, the, the, the chicken is really. It's not really, it's, it's touching the skillet, but in a sense, it's really on the surface of the skillet because it's so hot. That temperature is so hot that it really keeps the sear and causes the chicken to sear, and the crust is already formed on it. So, all we got to do at this point is just keep an eye on it. See that? And it's actually a crust. I'll let you touch it in a minute if you like. The dish that I did today for you guys is on page. Uh, 18 in my uh, cookbook, Food for Thought. Uh, for those who just walked in, I'm Chef Otis Wagner. This is my wife, uh, Carly <laughs> Jet, uh, or <Oral> Wagner. <laughs> Hi. Um, <laughs> see that? Now, when you want to drop this in like this and drop it away from you, so you won't burn yourself in the hot oil. And look, you got a nice vent on this thing. Everybody see mm -hmm. that? Actual crust is formed. I didn't even put any season on that. You see? So I'm using grapeseed oil because grapeseed oil has a higher smoke point than olive oil. Everybody still with me? Yeah, if you don't know, believe Yeah, grapeseed. I've been buying olive oil. Yeah, grapeseed or canola. Another thing about olive oil too is that. If you're doing low temperature cooking, yes, olive oil is fine. But if you're doing high temperature cooking, like sherry or saute, olive oil is going to start to burn at about 212 degrees. To steer properly, you really need about 300 degrees. So we suggest you go with canola oil or grapeseed oil. The searing and saute, once you master that, you can cook anything. I mean, say fish, chicken, vegetables. Mushrooms, onions, you can just about do anything once you match it on a steer and salt it. And it is excellent for color, as you see, it caramelizes. Steering allows your product to caramelize. And what caramelizing is, is once that, that chicken hits that hot skillet and it starts to sear, the juices are going to be trapped inside and all of the sugar in the product comes to the surface, like caramelized onions, right? You're going to caramelize onions. When those onions are sauteed you know, in your skillet, and they start to heat up and start to cook. The moisture is going to be trapped on the inside, and the sugars come to the surface and start to caramelize. And that's what caramelization is. And this is how you do caramelization, too. And this is how caram a caramel a caramelized uh, chicken breast would look with the sear method. You see that? It's got a nice set. Uh, and this is also important for presentation. If I'm in a restaurant, a three or four star restaurant, and you order a uh, 60 or 70 dollar full course meal with wine or whatever, the food has to look right. If it doesn't please your eye, you shouldn't want to eat it. Okay. It has to please the eye first. And presentation is everything. Searing is an excellent way of, pre of presentation because of the color, the appearance. And then I can do a, uh, a mushroom sauce and I answer that so we can go on. Hundred different ways of that you steer. Okay? Anybody have any questions? You guys want to 
It's a shrimp and chicken stir fry. Like you say, you have a, a, a class where you teach four different courses? Or yeah, I do cooking classes at, at the ABC mm -hmm. store. Mm -hmm. At the mm -hmm. ABC store. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pretty well known out there. Oh my goodness. What's that about? Mm -hmm. Video mm -hmm. stuff on uh, YouTube. Have a good You want to try to write? Yeah. I don't know that it's food is warm or not. I have to turn my sternos off when we left yeah. out. And if it's cold, please forgive me. That's what she definitely wants to make a I just did my <laughs> last I just did my last cooking class uh, on October the fourteenth. Because the holiday season is in and it's really too busy. And when will you start up again? Uh, next year sometime. Probably uh, I'll, I'll be doing my first class again. Uh, probably a uh, <laughs> it should be warm though, because the chicken is still warm. Not all HEBs have classes. Most of the upstores, the upstores are the ones with cooking connections. They usually have classes. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's a, they're, they're really enlightening. Like I'll give you an example. The class I just did October fourteenth. It was really a wine, cheese, and cooking. That class is really worth 60 bucks per person. But mm. I, 
uh, you won't always take those kind of classes. You won't always. Very tasty, right? A lot of flavor. I've worked all over the United States. I, I started out in New York. Uh, and, and, you know, as I worked as an apprentice or a journeyman, like first, second cook, sous chef. Uh, sous chef, basically, and then you kind of, if you really want to learn the uh, different types of cuisine in different parts of the country, you have to move around. So I worked in Lafayette for two years. I worked in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, San Francisco. And I was in New York for a number of years. Upstate New York and Manhattan. I worked in the Bronx, you name it. That's to get experience. My food has a lot of flavor, guys. Yeah, it right? <laughs> it's a lot of flavor here. This is this is this is a uh, Cajun rice. This rice is a uh, Cajun rice, and this is a shrimp and chicken stir fry. Mm -hmm.